It's my Welcome. pleasure to introduce my colleagues, Eric Schuler and Tiffany Quash, um, research uh, methodologists at CTRL, who are going to talk about CTRL's research support services. Zoom is yours. Good morning, everyone. How are you? I am Tiffany Quash. I'm here with. Hi, Eric Schuler. Nice to meet you all. And I'm going to go ahead and share first my screen. Can everybody see that? I just want a thumbs up. We can, Tiffany. We can't see you. I think maybe your virtual background um, is blocking you from view. Oh, I mean, it's okay if you can't see me. I just want to make sure you can see the slides at least. Okay, yes, we can see the slides. Okay, fantastic. Um, so just a couple of things that we do, um, reasons that somebody would want to book a consultation with us is um, they would are there to ask questions about analysis. They're there to ask questions about which appropriate program to use. Um, there's uncertainty about planning your research. If there's a methodological, methodological questions about a grant proposal, those are things that we do as far as our consultations. Things that we do not do, we're not technical support, so like AU apps, um, completing your analysis, classroom demonstrations, teaching or troubleshooting software are responsible for teaching students how to use the software. Um, that is not our responsibility to teach the students how to do that. I want to emphasize that. We are not here to write your IRBs, and we will not develop um, the state or the theoretical lens for, that you will be using. Eric, did you want to add anything to that? Um, I want to talk about this in a little bit later, but I also want to say, like, we're happy to chat through at any point in in the research project. It's really good, though, to talk with us early on. That way we can kind of talk in, about potential analyses, because usually once the data is collected and there's an issue, sometimes it's like... Uh, it's like calling an ambulance when you should be calling the mortician at times. So it, when you have the data already collected, it does make it in terms of limitations on what some potential options might be. So we always recommend they like, talk to us early on in the project. So a couple of programs that we support for qual uh, for qualitative um, or survey, we do Qualtrics or in vivo. And then for quantitative, I'm gonna go ahead and let Eric talk through this. <laughs> Sure. Uh, we have a long list of quantitative software. Some disciplines use different ones, um, but primarily we do R, R Studio, Python, JSP, Jamovi. Jasmine and Jamovi, those are both open source, They're almost like SPSS, but they have an R backbone to it. So completely free. Um, I'm a big proponent of open data, open coding, open source data, open source programs as well. So I'm, I prefer R and R Studio. Um, so a lot of the workshops we do are focused on that because we are trying to really push for open open coding and just using R. Uh, just for lots of reasons, um, there's a B article, happy to share that I wrote, that's actually just came out earlier this month. I'm happy to share that later on if you all are interested. But we also have SPSS, we have Stata. The Stata license is on the AU virtual apps, as is SPSS. Um, we also can provide support for Excel. Uh, SAS on demand. I want to make that really specific though, because we do not have a campus license of SAS anymore. Uh, so it will have to be used a SAS on demand, which is a essentially like a browser based version of it. We also have access to MATLAB, Mathematica, and I also provide, um, I'm the liaison for the HPC committee. So I also help getting individuals up and ready with the high performance computer we have at AU. There's no cost associated with it. If it is part of a grant, we do ask that you write it into the grant. But I do want to mention that if you're interested. Um, in terms of software licenses, um, anyone can access Envivo or Qualtrics as long as you're AU student, faculty, or staff. If you are um, if you're a faculty member or staff member using an AU-owned computer, we can actually help install SPSS for you. We do not have individual licenses of Stata, though. That's on the, the network. So you'd have to use the AU virtual applications or the SPS or the um or like the high performance computer. Um, MATLAB, that can be installed on any computer, personal or work computer, yeah. not a problem. Mathematica, same deal. Uh, but if you're interested in more specific stuff from the software, please reach out to us, let us know. Um, this also, I'm the representative for the ICPSR. So if you're interested in using data for like for courses, I can kind of provide some resources for that and any, enter any questions as well within that. Uh, next slide. Um 
Wait, I just want to add on that oh, with sure. QDR, which which is the qualitative data repository. Um, there is um, we're going to be actually ending that this year. So um, just as a heads up, if, if that's something that you're interested in, this is the year to be using it. Good. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the quantitative and computational research and stuff that we can talk through. So for consultations, I always try to just listen first. What What are you specifically interested in learning? I'm going to ask questions about what's your research hypotheses? What's your research questions? Um, that way I get a better sense of the project itself, because my big thing is always thinking about alignment. If you don't have alignment between your research hypotheses and your analyses or the data, you might not be able to answer the questions you're really interested in. So I'm always going to be thinking about what are, what's the bigger picture and then kind of walking me through all those steps. Um, again, whenever you're planning out analyses, if you have already have the data, that's going to be okay. limiting potential options that you might have. So I always recommend like talking to us before you collect the data because we'll be able to kind of talk through these. And let's say the data is like it's restricted access or it's really sensitive. That's okay. Just talk me through some of the big points of it. And if you can get me some of the mean standard deviation, the data type, I can actually simulate data and get it into a usable format to kind of walk through and talk through things within that. So if you're not able to share the data, that's okay too. Um, I'm also going to kind of think, talk through them, like the design and the measures. I'm trained as an experimental psychologist, but my focus is in psychometrics. So I am really, really interested in talking about measurement, measurement error, and are we actually measuring what we think we're measuring? So, I mean, those are always kind of key things, just given my focus and my training for research. But I'm happy to kind of talk through the design because there's no perfect research design. Some are better than others, but each one has limitations. So really kind of really thinking through those and how that might be helpful. Um, and also kind of thinking through if you're about to collect data, if you're going for a grant. Well, what about a power analysis? How do you know you have enough people within your study? I always like to include like 30% additional participants on top of my numbers I need. That way I have a cushion. If there's missing data or chaos responses or not usable data, at least I have enough to be able to detect an effect if an effect does exist. And also kind of, I'm happy to also talk through like, how do you document your data documentation, annotated code for reproducibility results? Again, I'm a big proponent of open coding, open data. So I'm always happy to share any of my workshop materials that are in R, they're all heavily annotated. Just because I, when I was learning R, those types of things were helpful for me. Um, so again, here to help out and talk through things, happy to kind of just listen and then help you at any point of the research project, whether it's early stages of thinking through it, or kind of talking through reviewer comments. I might be a little bit limited there, just because of my discipline, I don't really, I might not know specifics within the discipline. So I might ask a lot of questions, but that's just to get a full scope of what, what's going on. So um, some of the things that I'm gonna be asking everybody is what is your research question? And then what's your theoretical framework? These are the two questions that will really help guide our conversation um, when you're meeting with me. Um, and then with your data collection, what is your research procedures? Um, a lot of times people will have an idea of, well, well, maybe they don't have an idea of what their research procedure will be. And it's really important to kind of think this through. Um, how will you collect the data and address your positionality? Positionality statements are really important um, when you're coming up with your research question and your theoretical framework. It will really help guide your study um, and then how familiar are you with Qualtrics and Vivo or QDA, the qualitative data analysis software? Again, here at American, we use in vivo. Um, if you want to use Deduce, I, um, I'm familiar with Deduce. It's something else that I use. Um, I'm not familiar with Max QDA or Atlas TI. I've used it in the past, but it's not my area of expertise. Um, but here at American, you can get a free copy of in vivo. Um, we update it every year. And then, of course, Qualtrics for survey collection. When you're reflecting, are you answering your research question? It's really important to stay true to that research question, as well as making sure that you're aligning with that theoretical framework. And have you given yourself enough time to process your experience? It's really important to make sure you're kind of working backwards and saying, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing. 
have you really given yourself enough time to make sure that, um, excuse me, your study will be completed in a given amount of time, especially if you're working with a grant. In order to book a consultation with us, you can use this QR code um, that you can find here. You can also find the link online when you go to our website um, on the CTRL website. It's really important that you please, please, please book a consultation with us. Um, we, as much as we love answering your emails, it's the easiest way for us to track what's being said and what's being done and meeting your needs is to book a consultation with us through the consultation request form. So do you have any questions for us? Just again, here are some resources that are available. Um, the Office of Research, the Institutional Review Board, CTRL consultation page that I was talking about, and then the library. And you can take a snapshot of that. And I also just posted the link to our on-demand research software workshops. So if you're not familiar with SPSS or in vivo or Qualtrics, we've recorded a bunch of small workshops that walk through uh, kind of basics to some more advanced stuff as well. And we'll be having a, a bunch of different research uh, methods workshops in the fall, as well as I believe it's um, in mid-September, we'll be doing a, a new faculty uh, workshop as well, just to talk more about research. So there'll be more information about that coming soon. But let us know if you have any questions. Definitely. And again, I'm sorry that you can't see me. For some reason, I don't know why my video is not. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm right here. So, um, but does anybody have any questions for us that we can answer for you? I do. Yes. Sorry. I don't know if the protocol is to raise my hand. Um, just go ahead and shout it out. <laughs> so, hi, Eric. So my question is, will you be doing um, live um, workshops? Will you be doing in person like you used to pre-COVID? Um, I'll answer that question. So we'll be doing okay. live workshops, but they're going to be via Zoom, though. Oh, OK. And then I had one more, and then I'll mute myself. The other question was, um, so unless I'm mistaken, and I think it's correct, but I just wanted to um, to make a comment and ask a question. So the comment I was going to make is, um, Go to the workshops. The workshops are amazing. They've helped me so much. So thank you. And view them online. They rock. The end. Okay. But the other question was, so while we are writing grants, right, while we are working on our data plan and our analysis plan, we can come to you and you can help us to shape our research. Um, um, we can, you can help us to shape, shape like our analysis plans and things like that. Um, do you have access to graduate students if we need specific people? If I say, for example, I need something to do, do someone to do do files. I have funding. I need to hire somebody uh, separate from our departments. Do you have access to people like that who come through? No, we don't. Oh, boo. Okay, thank so, you. So yeah, we don't have right as of right now. We don't have any. We don't have a, a an RA in our office for us. Right as of right now. Okay, thank so you. So right now it's just Tiffany and I. Um, so we we don't have any sort of um RAs or be able to have them put on other projects. We don't have that right. ability right now. Right. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it would have been wonderful. Okay, thank you. Right. But these guys are still great. Go to them. Thank you. Any other questions? Don't want to put anybody on the spot. Again, we're here to answer all of your questions. Um, just make sure you give us enough time, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to, to be able to you know, get to your analysis or anything that's needed. I mean, it's just really, it's about time. And just like we tell our students time management, um, it really is helpful for us to, to give us a little bit of leeway in order to, to address what your needs are. So on this car, oh, go ahead, Tiffany. Nope. No, nope, I was going to say without that, we'll hand it back over. Yeah, thank you so much for being here and um, for for any further programming that you provide for our new faculty. Um, and uh, it turns out we now have 
uh, an additional short break. So our next segment starts at noon. So that's in a little less than four minutes. So go grab some more coffee. Uh, thanks again, Eric and Tiffany. Um, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>